Very happy with that, Oxford United fans. That felt like a big three points. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View and welcome to another review of another Oxford United game. Today, after seeming like an eternity on the road, Oxford finally got back to another home game. They were at home to Preston North End. So three away games for Oxford United on the spin, but not happy travels at all. No wins in any of them, two in the league, one in the cup. And whilst we were getting plenty of plaudits for the way we were playing, plenty of pats on the head, that narrative does wear a little bit thin. Oxford needed to get something on the board today. And whilst it was no means a must-win game, you felt that we needed something just to keep that momentum, keep that good vibes around the club going. And whilst Oxford certainly did not start well in this game at all, they came back with a vengeance, came back strong, and it is another victory at home in the Championship. That's two wins now out of the opening four games, so Oxford United fans pretty happy with that one. It finished Oxford United 3 Preston North End won. But Preston certainly played their part in this game and certainly were excellent at the start of the game as well. And Preston fans, you're more than welcome to your view on that. Did the referee ruin this game from your perspective? But we will get into all of it. I'll go over the team news, I'll give my review of the game and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video. If you just want to jump to those final thoughts or just want to jump around in the video, please feel free to do that. You can use the timestamps down below. But if you do, the very least you can do is hit that like button because that does help me out a heck of a lot. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. So let's have a look at this team news then. And there was some good news for Oxford United. Let's do that straight away. And it's Cameron Brannigan is back in the side. He did play in the League Cup game against Coventry, but it is good to have him back for this league game. But the bad news is that Captain Elliot Moore still remains injured. And Des Buckingham took the eyebrow-raising decision to drop Will Volks and play Josh McEachran in the holding midfield role. I was really worried about this when I saw Sam Long at centre-back and McEachran in centre midfield. Um, I needn't have been, but at the time I thought it looked a bit of a weak side. But Mark Harris up top is in sublime form and he was looking to make it four goals from four. And we did have new signing Sarike Dembele on the bench who signed this week before deadline day from Birmingham City. Moving on to Preston then, and it's been all change for Preston, even in the early knockings of the season. Poor Heckingbottom is now in charge of the club, but he's had a good first week in charge, getting two good wins, a win at home against Luton and a win in the Carabao Cup against Harrogate. It is one change for North End from that victory over Luton last weekend. Sam Greenwood comes into the side and he replaces Thronkia. New loan signing, Josh Bowler, does not make the squad. The guy who scored the goal in the 1-0 win last weekend was Will Keane and he starts up top in a two-man strike force. And the man who got a hat-trick in midweek over, over Harrogate, sorry, Militan Ozmagic, probably saying that name wrong, he takes his place on the bench. Couple of Oxford United connections for North End. Ryan Ledson on the bench for Preston. And also Freddie Woodman in goal is the son of ex-Oxford United goalie Andy Woodman. Let's move on to the game then. And Preston started this game on fire. They were all over Oxford in the opening stages of this game. They were pressing Oxford into mistakes. Oxford were happy to gift them possession in dangerous areas. But Preston played with an aggression that Oxford just could not match in the opening stages of this game. He had a good chance after two minutes. It was Greenwood who got the ball and he just ran at the heart of the Oxford United defence, got all the way to the edge of the penalty area and smashed his shot into the stands. That was a really good chance, but it didn't matter because Preston took the lead a minute later. And Oxford are so guilty of playing sloppy balls out from the back. I saw it against Coventry. There's been other times this season where it's happened as well. And Joe Bennett is the latest victim of this. It was an awful ball passing it blindly into midfield, giving the ball away to Preston who had an easy overload, an easy chance, well, not an easy chance, but an easy counter-attack chance. It was Potts who got the ball in from the right. The first shot was blocked by Oxford United, but it came out to Reese 
in and around eight yards out, something like that, who bundled the ball home. It was a shocking start for Oxford, a dream start for Preston, and you already felt the United had a mountain to climb. You didn't see anything from Oxford. They were so bad in possession. Again, they just couldn't live with Preston for, i say, up until we'll get to what happened, which changed the game. But Preston had another good chance on 17 minutes, and they really should have been more than a goal up. It's Long this time who plays a poor pass into midfield, and again, Preston get the opportunity to attack Oxford United by Oxford giving the ball away in a dangerous area. Reese again with the shot from the edge of the area. The shot was deflected and blocked, and we saw against Coventry just a few days ago how a blocked shot looped over Matt Ingram. This time, Coming was able to get back and tip it over the bar. A few moments after that, I think from that corner, that Oxford cleared the first phase that the ball came out to Will Keane, and he dragged a shot wide, and really Oxford United had not even started in this game, and you were wondering, when are we going to get a foothold? But bloody hell, we got back into it on 20 minutes with seemingly our first attack of the game. Matt Phillips and Peter Coso doing very well down the right-hand side, and they were able to get the ball back to Josh McEachran. It was a deep cross by McEachran, almost just a straight, ball into the penalty area and Mark Harris has ghosted in between Woodman in between the defense and he's got his head on it looped it over Woodman and into the back of the net four goals from four what an amazing start to the season for Mark Harris I've got to say though Preston's defending was pretty shoddy and the game went really scrappy after that as Oxford got more into it and they kind of up their intensity and matched Preston's aggression, really. And the game became very scrappy. Lots of needless free kicks banging around. Um, players started to get a bit annoyed with the referee, really. And it was only, I could think of one effort. Um, Thogarsson, one of your Icelandic players, or maybe he's the only one you've got. He had a, he had a drive on the edge of the box. And I think it was Brannigan. He, he nearly got in on goal, really. And it was Brannigan who got back with an excellently timed sliding tackle to present that danger but Oxford it was bad news for Oxford as we went into half time because they had two injuries two players going off injured in the first half so never ideal the first was Matt Phillips he always was a risky signing and hopefully he's not going to be injured for long and then it was Joe Bennett which looked a little bit more of a serious injury which is never really good, really, is it, to lose two players. And that was a worry. But Oxford did get in to half-time at 1-1. It was a fantastic start, as I mentioned, by Preston. And they'll probably be kicking themselves that they should have been leading by more as Oxford couldn't live with them for the opening 20 minutes. But credit to Oxford. We did get back into the game. We've got that knack of um, finding a goal in the opening throwings of this championship season. And we've done it again, and we've done it again with Sparky. I certainly don't think Oxford were great in the first half at all and it took them a while to get up to the speed of the game but once they did it was a lot more competitive but you did feel that Preston um, certainly in this game and certainly it could be anyone's game as we head into the second half I do worry that these two injuries at the time is going to limit Oxford's options in the second half of this game but will it we will find out as we come back to the second half And just like in the first half, it was Preston who had the first chance of the second half. And it was Greenwood again, just like in the first half, who started the half with a marauding run, got all the way into the heart of the penalty area. It was Kieran Brown, who was the only player who seemed to be able to match the run. It was his sliding challenge, which just about cleared the danger. But there was still a shot that came in from Preston and Cumming had to turn the rebound behind for a corner. But that Preston pressure was short-lived as not long into this second half, Ox. Oxford took the lead. There was not much in this game and it needed a bit of quality to lift it into life for Oxford. And we got that quality through Tyler Goodrum. A trademark Tyler Goodrum goal on 53 minutes. He picked the ball up on the Oxford right-hand side, glided inside, got to the edge of the penalty area, curled the ball beyond Freddie Woodman from the edge of the box. We've seen Tyler Goodrum score goals like that a number of times already. What a fantastic talent. And Oxford are in the lead. This game again went very scrappy, very bitty in the second half. There wasn't really too much to write home about. The clock was ticking down. Not much was really happening. Oxford were looking okay on the counter-attack. Dembele looking pretty lively, I must say, in his first, um, first chance to impress the Oxford fans. And I certainly think he did a good job. But the game turned Oxford United's way on 69 minutes. Mark Harris, the constant pest, the scourge of defenders everywhere. And it's his... 
ingenuity really which won a ball which he had no right to win he then is draws a clumsy foul from Lindsay uh, Liam Lindsay the Preston defender who was already on a yellow card and that gave the referee a decision to make and the referee sent Lindsay off Preston down to 10 men Preston fans you all let me know in the comments whether you think that was the right decision I thought myself it was a clumsy foul and gave the referee a decision to make and it just shows you how the hard work of Mark Harris just paying off because he just doesn't give up on balls. And he really won that foul and he won that opportunity for Oxford to play against 10 men. And they took full advantage of it. I think it was from that resulting free kick. Brannigan took the ball um, into the penalty area. Sorry, hooked the ball into the penalty area. Dembele kept the ball alive. Got the Oxford got the ball back across. I think it was Kieran Brown actually who put the ball in. It might not have been Sam Long. It was a deep cross to the back post. Sam Long won the header, knocked it back across goal, and Greg Lee honors a sub from for Joe Bennett tapped it in on the goal line. His first goal of the season, and that made it extremely comfortable for Oxford as we went into a 3-1 lead. Really wasn't too much more to write home about in this one. Oxford pretty much comfortably saw the game out. Preston don't really think they had too many chances. Oxford really didn't have too many chances after that. And the game just, from an Oxford point of view, very comfortably ground down for an Oxford United win. Preston, as I said, I'll come back to saying I know the fans were really unhappy with the referee performance. Every corner or throw in that went your way in the second half, there were a lot of ironic cheers. From my point of view, though, I thought this was a strong battling performance by Oxford United. Weren't at our best today, but we still found a way to win, scored some good goals, a fantastic victory, what we really needed, and um, just keeps that feel good factor and momentum going in this early part of the season. And that takes me on to my final thoughts. And let's start with the visitors, Preston North End. And yeah, so this game, it, you're going to come back to just thinking that first half of the game, you could have been 2-0 up. You could have been 3-0 up in the early stages where you completely caught Oxford cold and your pressing and your aggression was fantastic. I thought Greenwood was a really bright player. I thought his running with the ball was, was immense today. I thought Reese was a really dangerous player as well. Obviously, he got the goal, but he looked dangerous when he was on the ball too. Preston pressed Oxford more than I thought they would do today. I thought they might stand off Oxford a little bit for the early part of it, but you, you came out the blocks on, on fire and that hard-working midfield that you had as well just certainly gave Oxford no time on the ball. I would say, though, I thought defensively, probably a little bit slack and a little bit sloppy. I thought that first goal really should have been dealt with better by keeper and defender. And um, I felt that just kind of you, 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 maybe your lack of discipline just got the better of you. And I know, again, we'll talk about refereeing performances, but I just feel the players, rest, Preston players kind of lost their heads a little bit. Um, and the heads kind of dropped a little bit when they got it back to 2-1, when Oxford sort of took the lead for 2-1. But I would say from probably what you saw under Ryan Lowe, and now um, I would say you've been in, you should be encouraged by what you've got in Heckenbottom. Um, I think he's going to be a manager that's going to really demand high standards, demand um, high energy levels from this Preston side, and it might take a few weeks to get up to speed with that. Uh, but I feel that you bring good a good safe pair of hands with him, and I while while you might not be pushing high up the league. I, I feel that you, you still will be all right with Heckin Bottom in charge. Um, it's certainly a bit like how, what we're relying on home form at the moment. You might need to rely on your home form at Deepdale. But let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, let me know your thoughts on your transfer window and whether you think there's any weaknesses in the squad where you didn't quite fill it or whether you've got other players to come back into the squad as well. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I would say if you if you if you can keep that intensity level that you did for the opening sort of twenty thirty minutes of this game, I would say you're gonna win. You know, be in, be competitive and be, pick up points throughout the season. But um, let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Good luck for the season, and we will see you later on in the season at Deepdale. And let's move on to Oxford United. And from Oxford's point of view, I would say I was so annoyed and angry at the opening 20 minutes of this game. It's just the exact picking up from that Coventry game where Oxford were really poor. I thought this was a um, I thought we we're going to see another disjointed, frustrating performance where Oxford just can't pass the ball to each other. But 
we needed a bit of life and we got that bit of life through Mark Harris and thank goodness he's in good goal scoring form because he got Oxford back into this game and then from that point on I thought Oxford were okay I thought we weren't great I don't think at any point in this game we were great but we battled and we comp competed hard and we kind of ended up winning that battle in the end it needed a bit of magic from Goodrum and we certainly got that. And then it was nice to get that cushion of the 3-1 lead as well. But for overall, not a spectacular performance. Nowhere near the level of quality we saw from the Norwich game. But it shows that Oxford is still up for this fight and up for this battle. And I did, I wasn't too pleased with the with Long starting at centre-back. But I guess you're not really going to do too much because Thornley was ill and Moore was out. Um, and I was worried about McEachern in the centre midfield role. But... Des Buckingham called it right, and both those guys played pretty well on the set face of things, and Oxford got the victory. I really encouraged by what I've seen by from Dembele so far. He looked like he's going, he's a guy who just wants to get the ball, run at people, and make things happen, and that's encouraging to see. With the likes of Phillips, he's a controlled, calm head, but he hasn't got the bursts of pace that he used to do. He can still take people on, but he's a more of a more you feel more control with Phillips, whereas with someone like Dembele, you feel he's got that spark and X factor that something might happen. So that's really encouraging to see. And when you've got a player like Goodrum, my goodness, you're always capable of a little bit of magic. But above all else, a massive win to just keep the feel good factor going at the Kassam Stadium. It's um if we'd have lost today it by no means would have been a disaster, but it would have just felt you just felt like the kind of the vibes would have gone down a bit and people would have started to worry. So that keeps everybody happy. Six points from four games is a very nice return. We go into the international break now. Just one thing, I thought Greg Lee did really well in that second half as well. Is he going to start taking that place back over from Joe Bennett now, who hasn't necessarily started the season? that great but let me know on all of those things let me know if will vaults is going to come back in from mckechran you would imagine that he's got to right i i still thought that decision was a little bit strange but you know let me know on that one as well and let me know your thoughts on this transfer window this excellent transfer window this unbelievable transfer window that oxford united have had Who's the most exciting player that you think that we bought in? Was there anybody that we should have bought in as well? You're probably going to say a striker. But is there any other options that we should have taken? But you can't be too greedy because we bought a ton of quality into this side. Happy days, Oxford United fans. Enjoy it. Enjoy it all the way over this international break. We'll be back to do a review. Well, I'll be back to do a review of the game against Stoke. Fantastic times. Come on, you yellows.